Fernando Verdiago. Stressful, I mean, not at all the, the part we enjoy the most of it. 
work out. So that one was a very different one and a very nice one. And so then were the actors, once the cast is assembled, did you guys have rehearsal time together or was it just sort of right into shooting? No, there was no rehearsals. The way we, we, we it was a very uh, particular way of filming. We never knew the screenplay. It was written. We had it. It was the only one, and maybe David, I think. But no one else. No one else. Not even the production designer, nor the um, executive producers. No. So we we would learn day by day. We shot in absolute chron absolute chronological order, and we would learn every day what was going to happen. We would get there and he would talk to all the actors in a very different and separate way. And then he would put it together and surprise us. Sometimes we would expect something and, that, and, and, it, and it would happen the opposite. And we would like, have to solve it right in the very moment of the scene. And um, I think it was really incredible the way he did it. Uh, this, this, this chronological uh, way of working because it really helped us into really immersing the character's emotional journey, embrace it like if it was real life. Right. So interesting. So what is sort of the um, so what was sort of the, the dynamic then with you and Fernando and the children in the film? Did you guys spend a lot of time together? Like how how did that sort of bond uh, uh, happen? It seems so natural on the screen. Uh, well, um, I I think I was one of the last characters I had to choose, you know, um, because when I was chosen, I think they started a week after the shooting, and uh, I I am not an actor, obviously. And I work, I'm a label guy. I work in music. I do a art for uh, record label. So, and I met up also at a Radiohead concert in Mexico City. <laughs> uh, a Radiohead concert? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he called me two days later and I was like, yeah, so far, okay, maybe you want something like soundtrack, uh, synchronization, rights, contracts from artists. You know? And he told me, uh, like, a Spanish English word. So pushy, 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 pushy. Hello, your question. He, he, we were in, in the various rooms, and Marina and I were together in the same room, and I felt like low budget in the movie because <laughs> we are sharing the same space. <laughs> there were a house behind the house that David told you about. There were a hole somewhere where we used to stand until they talk. And the uh, kids were in, uh, in one room, Leo and Nancy were in, in the other room, and we were together in the other room, and we spent a lot of time, but like not talking about the movie, only like knowing each other and listening what happened. And there were only one battle. <laughs> so it was like, you were at home because you should wait for the kids if someone was inside. You should wait for the other to finish his thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that made us feel like in a family. And then that was like a day and a day and again and again and again. And then when we were called to, to set, uh, we knew each other better. And, we shared a lot of things before. I think that was the, the start of everything. Mm -hmm. Then Alfonso told us separate things about, right. not necessarily the same thing that he told the other right. one. So he told me, mm -hmm. your favorite song is this one. You mm -hmm. didn't want to cut that other one. And, I'm not <laughs> 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 and the next thing he was like, no, no, no. It's easy, it's your song, it's your song. <laughs> so he was like doing this thing 
making the grading yeah. and all that, yeah. yeah. but like each uh, building reality. Yeah, yeah. Building reality, yeah, like creating chaos. Carlos, what was your experience like on the on the set? Well, it was very special because I played Alfonso as a child and I had a big responsibility in that movie. And it was very fun because we we do actions that are very alike. So I technically just had to be myself. But sometimes he did give some very specific um, directions like you hate your old work. He's like the worst person ever. You, you don't ever want to be with him. So when we were together in scenes, like we were always like looking for something to like. Oh, I wanted to sit there, or I wanted to read that comic. So we had to like, and it was very fun because we were play fighting and we were having a lot of fun with every like individual person, and we got to know each other. And I had a lot of fun. Great. Um, I also just wanted to say, Carlos, you're fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, one of the things I think is so interesting, interesting about the, the portrayal of the parents in this film, um, I don't want to be too personal myself, but as a young parent of myself, is that they, they're so flawed. And I love that. I love the honesty of, of portraying parents as, as flawed. Did you feel any sort of tension making the film about like pulling away from that, or as 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 the film is you know being directed that um, that you wanted to to um, you know try to pull more towards the children, or or, or what was that sort of direction and experience like as as as, as how do you portray the parents as that? They're so loving, but they're also just so like independent, and they they kind of want to go away and be be their own people. Um, was that difficult to to sort of portray that, or is that something that was always baked into the to the idea of the, the script and the performance? Well, um, I think we really embrace and surrender to the way Alfonso was working and the way he was like leading us to what he had in mind and what he remembered. And also, this really connected with our own memories, or, or, uh, or at least that happened to me, with my own parents and with my mother and the way I remembered her. They, they are like really uh, parents of their time, you know, but, like the way they. Like the way she leaves the children at the, at the beach and goes to to do yeah. whatever the tires of the car and, and she just leaves them there. I remember. I don't. I, 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 I think that that's the way they were. I don't know why. They the, they were like very parents that were parents really young, maybe yeah. in in a, in a time where uh, and they and, and for example for for a woman woman to face a divorce in the 70s, it was really hard. I mean, the, she was really pointed at, and the children were too. And I've also talked a lot about this, and that's why she is so stressed and so throwing at Phil all her frustration. And also, he talked a lot about that particular relationship between Sophia and Phil, which is very complex, because it's, a, it's a, an employer-employee relationship, but it's also a very intimate relationship She's like the silent witness of all her sorrow, but uh, but but also it's her most important accomplice. So it, it's it's a, I love I love the way that Alfonso built this mother because I think it's really complex. It's not a one direction character, uh, and that's I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that comes across beautifully. And um, and Carlos, how did you feel about that? Did you feel like um, that you're, that these, the characters of the parents felt like they loved you, but they are also kind of being pulled away. Yeah, like, it was very sad for me to, like, experience that because I really, like, felt like I was there. Mm -hmm. And I felt really bad because he actually had to go through that. And I was so into it, like, the scenes where I was, like, crying and, like, that was, like, 
natural. Like I didn't want to do that. I was not going to move if I actually felt sad. And it was just kind of like traumatizing like to experience those kind of things. Because my parents, like, they loved each other very much. And like seeing something so different was like a very different experience for me that I've never had before. You're okay now, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. All right. Um, uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure if this is a question for the cast so much or for David, but were there films that, um, other, other films or other touchstones or inspirations that you guys talked about in preparing for this film? like? Did you watch any other films or think about any other sort of, or listen to any like period music or anything? What was the sort of like touch of that we're setting up the preparation? Well, we can channel, we'll, we'll try to channel Alfonso. Okay, and, um, sorry. Who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight because he's in Europe with his family. But um, one of the things that he was always adamant about um, and, and, uh, is that he was really, really trying not to echo. I mean, and this is a, a man who has, I think, probably seen every movie that's ever made, quite honestly. He's um, uh, uh, an incredible cinephile, but he was trying very, very hard not to echo any, any movie that he'd actually seen. From shot, from page to page, from shot to shot, he was very, very focused on it. And one of the great stories that he tells is that he was working, he was setting a, a shot, and I think they actually shot it, and he was talking to Ada Henio, uh, uh, the, uh, the production designer, and he was whistling a tune as they were preparing the scene. And he realized that the scene, that the tune that he was whistling was from a very specific movie, and that what they had, the shot that they had designed was actually reminiscent of that movie that, was, that he was hearing in his head. And so he told him, hey, hey, we can't do it. We're going to have to do it. We're going to, we're going to do it this way instead. And hey, hey, he said, but the, the other way is much, much better. And he said, no, we're going to do it this way anyway. So, so he was really, really, really quite, quite careful um, uh, about making this truly the, the, story, the story of his life. Um, I have to ask, though, like, the one um, movie with the movie with the space man floating in space, is that kind of a little like gravity joke or? <laughs> I don't know, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, what he likes to say is that was the only way he was ever going to get Gene Hackman in, in one of his movies. <laughs> um, you know, I think we have a little bit of time for questions from the audience if you guys are up for that. Um, does anyone in the audience have any questions? Yes, I see the gentleman from Radio Back. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Cleo? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, so the question is, can you tell us about Cleo? Really? Yeah, um, she's a beautiful person, incredible human being. She's from a, a small community called Santiago in Oaxaca. She is a personal actress. She is a teacher. She just finished her teaching school for children. She never thought that she would act ever in her life. They actually, um, they did a very, very, um, uh, excel, excel. Oh, yes, yes. Uh huh. Casting. <laughs> they, they, I think they saw they more than uh, a thousand or more women, and they and she went to that casting by accident <laughs> because her, her sister, who was a singer and was pregnant, wanted to know what her casting was about. So she told her to go instead of her. That was that had been she had been called her sister. So she went and she didn't want it to. And, and, and then, well, she's here and she's beautiful. And, and I, all I can say is that she's a very um, beautiful human being. Sí.
Uh, I think uh, it, she's asking about when are we going to premiere this film in theaters and then on Netflix. Um, the film is coming out uh, on Thanksgiving weekend in New York and Los Angeles, and then it's going to spread out around the country. Um, and we'll continue to play in theaters for quite a while. And it will premiere on Netflix on December 14th. And the idea, the idea is very simple. Is, um, <coughs> is we're trying to give as many people the opportunity to see the film as possible. Netflix have been incredible on uh, supporters and partners in the movie. Um, and so it'll be, it's, it's, it's really going to be quite a unique experience, which is that people will have a chance to see it in the theater if they want to, but people who cannot see it in the theater will still have this, this sort of simultaneous opportunity, um, which is really quite groundbreaking and, and really hasn't been done before. We're, we're excited. And can I just say, like, on behalf of AFI Fest, we're so thrilled to, um, to be able to help you with the theatrical experience tonight. So um, thank you so much. You know, unfortunately, I think that's all the time we have for questions tonight. But um, I would like to thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.